The leading voices today that are warning us about the Matrix have all, unfortunately, shown us that they've only escaped one Matrix system and were duped into embracing another. If you don't know what the Matrix is, it's a movie where the truth is hidden from the mass population and most people go on accepting what they've been told without questioning and without thinking for themselves. So when people today talk about escaping the Matrix, the Matrix is strong. That requires you to see things as they truly are and not allow others to brainwash you with lies. But unfortunately, we're seeing people like Sneeko, Andrew Tate, and now Andrew Tate's brother Tristan, all blindly accepting lies that a lot of popular Muslim apologists have made about Christianity and use them as justification for why Islam is true. Just a few days ago on Twitter, Tristan was referring to charity workers that were involved in a sexual scandal involving 12 and 13 year old kids. And Tristan said that there's a special place in hell for those who harm children. So on the surface, you might think that Tristan would find it disturbing for adults to be sexual with kids as young as 12 and 13, right? Well, that's what I thought too. That was until Pearl from Pearly Things made a post about Muhammad's relationship with a nine-year-old girl. In her post, Pearl was asking about how old Muhammad's wife Aisha was when Muhammad married her. Now, according to Sunni Muslim sources, the correct answer to this question is that he married her at six and he consummated the marriage when she was nine. So in other words, Muhammad was in his 50s when he had sex with a nine-year-old girl. So Pearl made a tweet asking about this when Tristan responded and he gave two responses that we always hear from Muslim apologists. The first is that it was a different time when everyone was doing it, so therefore it wasn't bad. And the second one is that the Virgin Mary was also a child, so Christians can't complain. His first response reads, when people complain that it was a different time, they literally only focus on the prophet, peace be upon him, and the Middle East. That was in the seventh century. You live in England, right? Google how old Princess Isabella was when she married Richard II of England over 800 years later. He then cites a screenshot from a Wikipedia article that says that he was 22 and she was six years old when they got married. So his argument seems to be that, even though it might sound crazy to us now to hear about a 53-year-old man sleeping with a nine-year-old child, it would have been perfectly normal and acceptable in the past. And of course, the implication is that it only appears to be immoral to us today because of the time that we're living in, and therefore, Muhammad didn't do anything wrong or immoral. But there's at least two really big problems with this argument. First, unlike Muhammad, King Richard isn't considered by his followers to be the perfect moral example for us today. Since Muhammad is taken to be the moral authority in Islam, this would still be a problem for Islam in a way that it wouldn't be for King Richard. Secondly, Tristan seems to be missing one incredibly important difference between Muhammad's marriage and King Richard's. While it's true that King Richard married Isabella when she was six, as it states in the very article that Tristan himself cites, King Richard and Isabella's marriage was never consummated meaning they never had sex. Their relationship was strictly platonic and was only friendly, not sexual. So this means that if this article proves anything, it only proves that Muhammad was unique in sleeping with her while she was a child. If King Richard could have kept the relationship platonic, then obviously Muhammad could have as well. Now, this is important because according to Andrew Tate's definition of the matrix, we're told that it's the sheep who blindly accept what they hear without fact checking and looking for themselves. But of course, everyone makes mistakes. So maybe this was just a one-off. So after Pearl acknowledges that Princess Isabella was six when she married King Richard, Tristan responds by saying, what until you hear how old the Virgin Mary was when God impregnated her? Joseph also married her. Please look all this up. Now, there's no doubt that Tristan is getting this from Muslim apologists since this is one of the most common moves that Muslim apologists make when Christians raise concerns about Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. When presented with the uncomfortable fact that Muhammad was in his 50s when he was intimate with a child, Muslim apologists would usually respond by saying that Murray was also a child and therefore Christians have no leg to stand on. But once again, there's a lot of problems with this argument. First and most obviously, when Tristan says that God impregnated Mary, he makes it sound as if God had sex with her, which of course he didn't, and of course Muhammad did when it comes to Aisha. The sex part is where the entire controversy is, not that she got pregnant at some point. If Muhammad never had intercourse with her, then of course people wouldn't be bringing up the fact that she was only nine. Secondly, he says to look it up as if we'll find that Mary was just a small child when Joseph married her. But if we actually do go look it up, we find that not only does the Bible not give Mary's age, but 
Muslims are usually referring to traditions that say that she was 12 to 14. Now, even if that were true, not only is 12 and 14 far, far better than six, but even worse for Tristan's argument, those sources have been shown to be unreliable. And even more, if we go to the actual studies of the ancient world, the average age of the first marriage for women in that region was in the late teens or the early 20s. So given this, Mary was likely in her late teens or her early 20s when she married Joseph, but honestly, it doesn't really matter anyway since the main issue when it comes to Muhammad was the sexual aspect and Mary was a virgin when she got pregnant. That's why she's referred to as the Virgin Mary. So this move fails in its attempt to protect Muhammad by accusing God or Joseph of doing the same thing that Muhammad did, which according to Andrew Tate, is a common move for the Matrix to make. He says, the Matrix doesn't apologize, they just accuse the people who expose them of sexual crimes while protecting the real predators. And when Tristan talks about the Oxfam sexual scandal involving 12 and 13 year olds, he says that there's a special place in hell for those perpetrators. But when it comes to Muhammad, he punts on the kid gloves, which is another common tactic that the Matrix uses. Because according to Tate, when you're an actual sexual predator, this is how the Matrix treats you, kid gloves. They protect the predators and lie about anyone who tells the truth. And for years, Christians were called liars for giving the facts about Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. For years, Christians were called liars for saying that the Bible wasn't changed at the Council of Nicaea. And for years, Christians were called liars for saying that the Quran wasn't perfectly preserved right down to the letter. But now, we're in the position where these types of Muslim scholars can no longer openly lie about those things without the people outside of the matrix taking note of it. The popular Muslim influencer Farid from Farid Response thankfully admitted that the famous Muslim scholar Yasser Qadi was lying about the preservation of the Quran. I believe that he finds the topic of the Qiraat to be uh, problematic for like the, the layman audience and therefore he simply lied. So even though today we have Farid and other Muslims exposing the lies that they've given us for years, as the Tates say, lots of people will willfully choose to be deceived and refuse to escape the matrix. Even with clear evidence of deceit, most people inside of the matrix will still refuse to believe the truth. They protect the predators and lie about anyone who tells the truth. You can watch Farid's full video down below to see what I mean. But for the first time in history, today we have access to Islam's most trusted sources and will no longer be gaslighted into believing the lies that were invented by some Muslim scholars and apologists. Because even as Andrew Tate says, there's been an important shift in power that the Matrix refuses to acknowledge. They can't fully censor information anymore. No longer can they tell us that Muhammad wasn't intimate with a nine-year-old, or that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, or that Mary was a small child when she married Joseph, or that the Bible was changed at the Council of Nicaea, and so on. We no longer have to be part of the matrix trying to control how we think about Islam. The only question now is, will the Tates and Sneeko also escape the matrix? Well, I guess we'll find out. But the next time you hear a Muslim defending Muhammad's relationship with Aisha by pointing to the life of the Virgin Mary, what are you going to say? What do you mean?